I have a customer who cracks me up. A long time ago, I was hired by him to put uh, rocks in his yard. And he's military. And we used to go back and forth in conversation either through the phone and through email. And the terms that he would use is execute the plan. Uh, you know, things like that. Like very, very um, military combat school uh, words to, uh, I mean, it was, it was weird in a way. <laughs> You know, but I was able to, to understand because of my years of service, you know, 13 years of service, 13 and a half years, um, I understand those terms, you know, and so it's, it's not, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not Greek to me like it would be Greek to you, um, somebody that may have never served in the military or maybe a younger person, you know, when you say, hey, I'm going to come over at nine o'clock and I say, put the plan in motion, execute you would probably be like, whoa, I didn't, I'm not hurting anybody. What do you mean execute? I, there's nobody here for me to flip the electric chair on, <laughs> you know, um, things like that. So I was hired to remove white rock from the front of his house because the homeowners association does not allow that. They only allow original looking natural type rock mulch or pine straw so he had put down hundreds of dollars of white marble chip rock and he had to get rid of it so I did that last year and like I said the terms that he used you know was execute the plan move forward and, and all these emails between him and I and him and the HOA president or, or whatever and I remember thinking to myself, holy cow, man, I'm just here to put the rock down. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I'm not, you know, I just, I just wanted to put the rock down. So he since has moved and he has, his house has been rented out. And I house washed his house a while ago. So he's been communicating with me over the past week about getting his house, house washed. And so that's what we're going to do today. And I'm going to meet his wife at nine to do the house wash. The problem is it's already 8.40. I have 20 minutes to go 45 minutes because I have to go east because of bad planning on my part, but also laziness. But I gotta go east and drop off two 15 gallon drums, empty drums of bleach and pick up a 15 gallon drum of bleach uh, in return. And then I gotta go from there up to where I got to do the job. I'm afraid to call the customer and let him know that I am running behind. <laughs> Cause I don't want, I don't know what's gonna happen. All the execute, all the military stuff. Thursday, we were communicating and he's texting me and my text is blowing up. So I text him and then he would text me what he said and what I said back in a long text. It would be like a cut and paste. And I'm like, what the hell? And I wrote him and I said, I do not understand what you're doing here. And he wrote back, it's a group text. I'm texting my wife as well. And so, you know, he's texting me, she's texting me and he's group texting her and me, so I'm getting all these text messages, which is causing me to have to look at my phone because I don't know if it's, you know, my kid's mom, if it's my kid saying hi, I don't know if it's another customer, I don't know if it's him, I don't know anything. All I do know is I got to work. <laughs> so I text him. I do not understand what you're doing here. Why are you repeating me? And he wrote back, it is a group text between, it's a group text with my wife. And I about lost my mind. And I wrote him back as professional as possible. Please remove me from your group or start a new thread with your wife. I cannot afford to read, to continue reading repeated texts. 
So then his wife is texting me and he's texting me and I'm responding to his wife because I'm about giving up on him. Um, and she apparently is going to be in town. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to deal with her directly. So I'm telling her where I'm going to be, you know, that I'll be there at a certain time and all that stuff. And she's asking me, you know, whatever. And so I got the address, I got the email and I got, you know, the time. And so all that is good now. Now it's 840 straight up and I got 20 minutes. So it's going to take me 10 minutes to get to where I'm going. 10 minutes to get the product. That's going to put me at 9 o'clock and about 20 minutes away from her. So I'm going to have to uh, call that customer or text her at least and say, hey, I'm running about 15 minutes late. So that's what I got going on right now. Starting off my week chipper. Now, my guy came by the house today. He was on time. I got a text message this morning from his girl explaining why he might be late. Uh, so he has fallen in line and he's doing good. He's doing what he's supposed to do, uh, doing what I expect him to do. And we are moving forward. So today he's gonna make some pretty good money. He's out there on his own mowing. He's my little contractor today, doing a good, good thing so far. Um, I'm trying to help him get some more of his own equipment so he doesn't have to use mine. I'd like to be able to just say, hey, you got Monday's route. Do you remember what it is? And boom, he goes, he mows, he comes by the house, he picks up his money, and he's done. Um, that would be nice. That's what we're working towards. So right now, I'm, I'm leasing him my equipment. And, uh, you know. Today, I got two houses to pressure wash. They're both two-story homes. Um, I got a little bit of bleach left in my bleachy thing. But it's been, what, a week and a few days. So it's been 10 days that the bleach has been sitting out in my chemical tank. Most of that time it's been covered. Um, the wind did blow the cover off and I didn't worry too much about it uh, because there's not much in there. And so we're gonna pick up a new 15 gallon drum of bleach here. Once I get those two done, I will go back to my house, let my dogs out, drop my trailer off and then I will go ahead and take you guys with me for a trip around the eight that he's doing. We did that a couple weeks ago. Now these eight are really, really, really wet. It did rain again Saturday. Good night, it rained again Saturday. So we got rain Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, but Saturday wasn't too bad. But it did rain. I did a jog on Saturday, I did a running video. Uh, three mile run and then I drank a nasty drink um, and I showed you guys the clouds I said man check out these clouds well sure enough I got home and probably 10 minutes after I got home it poured uh, but for a short time but I was really hoping that Saturday and Sunday it would be dry because my guy's gonna really really struggle with these wet yards so I'm gonna show up I'm probably gonna bring a, a pair of shorts or shorts a pair of socks for him uh, so he can change his socks. We'll probably fall in on him with about five yards done, or maybe three yards to go. So we'll see. But I'm here. This is where I get my bleach, guys. Savannah, guys. Okay, Savannah Brush and Chemical. It's right before the first viaduct on 17. Savannah Brush and Chemical. All right. So what is it? $50 and 29 cents, I think, for a 15 gallon drum of bleach super simple uh, and it goes pretty pretty good distance all right I'll be right back okay so I just text the wife that I'm about 15 minutes late but on the way I know so I anxiously await her response which I don't think she's so much like him with you know the whole military jargon stuff um, I'm sure she'll just be fine, but she's probably going to have to report oy, right away to the husband that uh, failure to execute in a timely manner is probably going to get me written up. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. I do not miss the military life at all, not one bit. I mean, I just don't. I adapted. It was fine when I was in it, but it started getting, as you start going up in rank, it really starts getting political. Um, 
I guess it's it's not your daddy's army anymore. You know, it's really not. Whatever. Um, all I know is I don't miss basic or um, you know the, the running every morning and the push-ups and sit-ups and PT and all. I don't I don't miss those early morning formations. I don't miss calling my soldiers and saying, "Where the hell are you? Why aren't you here?" Doing the paperwork, the write-ups. I don't miss that stuff. I don't miss the pomp and circumstance with all the all the um, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, like all the the ceremonies that we had to do. You know, you start going up there in rank. You got to start going to people's retirements. You got to start doing this, people's promotions, and all that stuff. And you know, you got all the paperwork you got to do, and you got to go to all the meetings with your command sergeant majors and your battalion commanders. You sit there and you go through all that stuff, and it's like, oh my goodness gracious! I just want to, I just want to fly. I just want to be on my helicopter and fly, you know. Or I just want to go out there and turn wrenches and fix something, take the helicopter rotor blades off, or pull an engine. Just you know, just leave me alone. But what I do miss about it is. 24-7, you got a friend, you got, you always have somebody to call, you always have a fellow platoon sergeant that you can call and say, hey, you know, what you doing? What are you doing this weekend? You know, you and the family want to come over for barbecue or, or hey, I'm, I'm free tonight if you need a DD, you know, anything. There's always something, always somebody that you can reach out to and quickly they're like, heck yeah, come on, you know, they, you know, it's just the, the camaraderie in that sense it's super cool um, so you know it's got its ups and downs you know of course what does it right so I don't know I guess the moral of the story is the grass ain't greener on the other side no pun intended um, you know not being in the military is great for me right now because I wake up pretty much when I want um, I go to work pretty much when I want I don't do things I don't want to do I run when I want to run I exercise I you know, I don't get called at two o'clock in the morning to go get a soldier out of the uh, lockup for DUI. You know, there's lots of things now that I don't have to mess with. That's great. Um, I get to live my own life, but at the same time, um, I'm I have to live my own life. You know, the military holds your hand, and, and the military really gets you from point A to point B in your life, your whole life, um, as long as you're a part of it now you're out and you don't have it's all you now it's sink or swim and you know you got to put up with that on your own you got to figure it all out there is no you know support structure like like you used to um so i i can understand why like people that retire they don't make it in the in the civilian world they you know they have issues because it's totally a different ball game and if that's your whole life, if that's all you know, if your vocabulary when you're dealing with a landscaper is move forward and execute, um, you're going to you're gonna have some times. You're going to have some rough times um, when you try to transition to civilian life. Uh, I, can, I can tell you that, man, because it is difficult, even on a level that I was at. It is difficult. Um, I don't miss it. Not at all, though I will say that. I don't miss it. Uh, I only miss some of the people. Okay, I did get a text message reply back from her with no problem to me being a few minutes late. 917, her house is right here. So we are looking pretty, pretty good. Let's take some pictures uh, and put some pictures up and see how this is uh, looking. The first thing I notice when I, uh, when I pull up to this house really is, you know, all the peaks and mostly all the windows. So let's take a look at these windows here. Definitely a lot of windows. So that means a lot of rinsing. Now pay particular attention to the garage door. Look at how the garage door has that black edging all around it. That's actually supposed to be white edging around it. Um, you can see it there in the left of the screen for sure. Uh, the right of the screen is kind of blocked off a little bit. Uh, I didn't capture it fully. But uh, yeah, that is all dirt and mildew, and we need to get that off of there. So that is definitely part of our job. Um, so we definitely need to do that. Now, when you look at the front of this house, 
you got not just the you know the overhang there by the front door and you got those columns but above there you got a second floor so you got those windows that you need to do and then you got the fascia and the eaves all the way up there to get with a, um, a vent in that eaves right there which is probably the bathroom vent maybe it's probably the fart fan outlet um, but now if you look above that bathroom window there's another peak and here's a better view of that other peak uh, that's where you start getting into really wishing you had a better machine because now you're not just going up but you have to go back with the water so you need height and you need the ability for it to arch and still get height so you can get that second peak way back there so that's where your smaller machines your smaller Troy builds and stuff like that that's where you start needing to get onto six and eight foot step ladders at a minimum to be able to uh, shoot your detergents up there with the pink second floor tip and we're going to show you that later on in the video and then as you can see here it is another look at that that peak and then you have uh, a high high gable right there on that second floor so you know doing this without a ladder is um, definitely taxing on your equipment you got to make sure you have the right equipment for it so you know if you don't then you definitely need a ladder and I don't like ladders so that's the uh, that's the whole deal with getting a nice pressure washer using the right tips so you can get your height and you can get your arch so let me uh, go ahead and and hush and uh, let you guys watch me do some pressure washing here in real time and we'll have a little bit of music in the background and then I'll be back to show you the finished product in just a bit. Sounds like we got some competition in the area. Somebody's pressure washing right there.
customer came home and she was absolutely thrilled with the results. So if you look around the garage door now, it's all white. There's no more black edge. I mean, even to the point where when you're looking at it now in the picture, you're going, I don't know what he's talking about, what edge? Well, remember, it was all bordered in black. So we got that looking really good. So she was real happy there. And you see those peaks are all nice and clean. They're all nice and white. Uh, I was able to do it all with just standing simply on the ground and using the paint tip. So more windows, all rinsed clean. All the columns are nice and clean. Everything looked really good there when she came up. She was so happy. And that elusive um, peak, <laughs> that peak in that background there, way up there. So you saw me get that. I put it to slow motion for you so you can see. And you can see the dirty, nasty water that was coming off of the, the roof there. Uh, that was just all from the peak. And then um, we look at the final product here of the front porch and the side with the high gables. Uh, again, no ladders, all doing it from the ground. And this total job for the front and the back and the two sides was with setup and tear down about an hour. And she had me go in the garage and actually spray down her garage floor with bleach and soap like I explained in the video uh, coming up here shortly. So we are done. She uh, paid a little extra. She had me spray down inside her garage because the previous tenants had pets in the garage and it stunk and it was like piss stains and shit. So I went ahead and put bleach soap down, let it sit, just let that dry for a while. And um, it took a long time because she couldn't get the garage door to open and then stay open a little bit. The sensors were messed up. So I got the sensors working for her. So a little extra money there. That guy's still there pressure washing that house. He's doing high pressure. I don't know if he's doing chems or not, but he's doing high pressure. That's the second time he's putting gas in his pressure washer. I mean, uh, I don't know, man. Whatever. Probably on video you might, I don't, well, you probably couldn't hear it turning off because mine probably over. And I'll put music on anyways, but. Uh, so that's done. And uh, my phone was blowing up, so I got to see who's, who's texting me. But yeah, I mean, we're out of there one hour. It's 10.30 right now. So we started 9.30 and one hour, and I did the garage as well. So, um, and that's that's um, set up and tear down. So we're done, one hour. So we got to go do another one that's right not far from here at all. And then uh, we'll be done with our pressure washing for the day. Hey guys, remember my tips. Um, some of you new to my channel and interested in pressure washing. This is the pink tip. This pink tip comes in a package of two. You get a pink tip and you get a blue tip. The blue tip is high pressure for second stories. The pink tip is a soap tip for second stories. Also works good as a rinsing tip for first stories without high pressure. So if you need to rinse off some stubborn loose shit off of your vinyl or whatever after you already applied your bleach, this will work good to uh, kind of jet the water off without it being too much pressure. Uh, but this is the second story tip. This is the trick. This is what gets you from, you know, with my four gallon per minute pressure washer now, um, this is what gets me up to those super high gables that you saw. And not just high gables, but also gables that are hidden behind, like the ones that you just saw on, um, you know, hidden up behind a, a gable, behind a garage. So you gotta really be able to get up there and this tip is what makes it possible. Now, other things that you can do, a longer wand in this tip will get you even further. Um, you know, if you put on like a five or six foot wand, or maybe a four foot wand over a three foot wand, you're gonna get further. If you put a five foot wand on, it's like stepping on a two foot step ladder. It gives you a little bit more height, a little bit more ability. Um, so those are the things to think about right there. Um, pink tip, the pink and blue come in a package. I never use the blue, it's sitting back there. But this is my soap tip and my rinse tip. I don't change tips for height. Okay, this is what I use. I use the black soap tip and fan my soap on and then I fan rinse it. All I do when it comes from soaping to rinsing is I pull the siphon hose and I close the siphon valve. That's it, that's all I do. I don't go to pressure tips or anything like that. Only if I'm doing concrete or brick or something that requires pressure. But vinyl, stuff like that, that the detergents can do all the work. I soap it up, I pull the tube from the siphon and then I rinse it off. Pink tip, black tip, that's it. For the next, I don't know, 
30 seconds or whatever this is. Look at all the peaks. <laughs> peak, behind peak, in front of peak, besides peak. This house is nothing but peaks. And more peaks. And more peaks. Now, it's not just that this is a lot of peaks. Now, these are some of the after shots. Um, but she's also located right next to the wood line. So there are a ton of spider webs, little spider nests, wasps, everything, everywhere. So it wasn't just a matter of being able to get my detergents up, but I also needed a little bit of pressure behind the detergents to really get it in there and be able to knock down the um, wasp nests and stuff like that. So this house was a little bit of a challenge, but again, it only took me about an hour to do. Uh, we did the whole house, ran all the way around it, got it soaked up, and then got it rinsed down. So my guy called, or text, uh, at 11.50. Said he had five done and was going to the restroom. So probably going to grab some lunch or something at McDonald's. And So he should be uh, on his sixth one. We're probably getting ready to finish up his sixth one. Um, the last one's really, really small, really, really simple. Um, the seven, six and seven, they're not bad to do at all. Um, they're easy. So, whatever, man, I can't complain. Um, so I'll, I'll send her an email invoice when I get home. And I got to email invoice the other customer I took care of this morning. Then I'll have the eight that he did. I'll email them uh, their invoice and so then I'll be done and we'll go ahead and get the uh, get the video up. We're gonna go ahead and swap out this with a new one. So what we're gonna do is line it up same way so the pull cord's the same and you see this one's pulled out and I think I mean I don't know why it's not going all the way back in but we'll take this off now that I have the new one we'll take this off and uh, and uh, then I'll be able to work on that one in my spare time and get things working so first things the first 10 millimeter socket brake torque on the four bolts that hold it on one okay this one has three two three and it's really simple to do this so if you're ever out and you have a problem and you know you break the spring or something bad happens that it's not just the rope that needs to be replaced. It's really simple to do this. I guess the hardest part is just don't lose the bolts. There's three. Then we got we got the pull cord here. We gotta figure out why it won't go all the way back in. I think maybe the spring. What's the? Oh, now it's back in. So we're just, We definitely have a problem with the spring, so we're gonna to have to fix that. But I ain't worried about it. And all I gotta do now. You see the jaws come out when you pull it. So all I gotta do is put this baby on in its place, line it up, and that's it. Put the bolts back on. So if you ever have an opportunity to purchase uh, a brand new unit, you know, a brand new housing, um, it's not bad to do. Um, or even buy like an old motor that has a good pull cord. You know, the motor might be broke, but the pull cord might work and everything else work. Just keep this housing set up in your, as a part of your arsenal. And if you're on a job and the pull cord breaks or the spring breaks or, you know, something happens that you can't, uh, that's what I'm looking for. 
you can't continue because of it. Um, I mean, look how fast this is to do. And really, we're done. Snug it up. Not too tight, but nice and snug. And there we go. We're done. All right, so... Um, back at the house, I'm back in front of my computer, and this is where I'm going to be. It's 5.13, and so my day started at what time? Um, my guy got to my house about 8, and we got him loaded up, we got him gone, and then my vlog started, basically, right? So, it's now 5 o'clock, my day is done. Um, I hit the, the mail, um, so I got, I got some, some checks in the mail, so I got, I got work to do, right? So, business doesn't end for us, uh, small business owners. It just doesn't end for us. So now, what I gotta do is I gotta enter payments into my computer, um, you know, into my program, and take care of my customers that paid right here. I have to invoice all the customers that my guy did today. He did eight of them. So I need to enter into the computer and then email all eight of these people their invoice for the day. Um, Again, that doesn't mean I expect a payment from all eight of these people. Some people do pay every cut. Some people let it go every two cuts. Some people just wait till the last weekend of the month or the first of the next month because a lot of people are soldiers or on fixed incomes, you know, senior citizens, retirees, stuff like that. So that's when they'll pay. Sometimes it's two payments. Sometimes it's three. It depends. Um, there are some weeks where, you know, some months where you have five weeks in a month and sometimes they're done the first, the third, and the fifth week. Uh, so not a big deal. It doesn't really matter. So my guy did the eight properties. He started at 8.34, and he took lunch. He took a break and all that good stuff. And um, he didn't finish his timesheet out, but it's not important because he's a contractor. He's not an employee anyways. But, um, you know, the deal is I got these yards. Here's the money. Go do them. You know, I'll pay you when you get back. So uh, he could have brought in 10 guys with him and got it done in two hours, or he could have done it himself, or he could have jerked around all day and, and just be rolling up now. Um, as it stands, I met with him sometime close to around 3.30, I guess, 3 or 3.30, got him squared away, um, received my equipment that I leased to him today as a contractor, and um, got things squared away there with him, sent him on his way, hit the P.O. box, got my, my mail, my checks from the customers, and uh, went to um, Kroger, hit some groceries, and I'm now I'm home. So you would think at 5 o'clock the day is done, right? 8 to 5, that's a pretty long day, and I did my pressure washing. Uh, no, my day is now just beginning. I got eight invoices to do. I got about seven or eight customers uh, that paid that need to get credited uh, that they paid. And then I got a vlog to work on. And that vlog is what you're watching right now. And this vlog is something that I've promised myself I'm going to do every single day. I'm going to put up a vlog and the reason why I'm doing it is because it keeps me honest with you guys. And I can't jerk around and I can't screw around and I can't get depressed and I can't get upset and I can't sit in bed with the covers over my head for a day or three um, because then I'd be letting every single one of you people down. Every one of you people down. And there's nobody here to motivate me, to push me out the door to get me going, to say, come on, daddy, or to say, come on, honey, or, hey, it'll be okay. There's nobody here except you guys, you right there, all you guys right there, and a, a very few um, close personal friends that are a phone call away, but nobody is here to come knock on my door and grab me by the short hairs and throw me out and say, go to work. So that's what this my vlogs are turning into. So Dan's Daily Vlogs, instead of the business name, Dan's Daily Vlogs, is Dan is going to put up a vlog daily. I'm going to do a daily vlog because it's going to motivate me and keep me going and keep me with purpose while I adjust to my new life. And if those of you don't know what my new life is, about six or eight weeks ago, me and my wife separated. So I'm sitting here in this house by myself with two dogs and no family and no relatives, no nobody nearby, nothing. Uh, all I have is me, my two dogs, my business, some friends, you know, far away, uh, very far away, 
uh, my mother and my brother very far away. Um, just me. So I have you. And I have almost 1,722 of you right now, I think. I'd have to look. But it was like 1,720 a few hours ago. So it's probably 1,722 now. Um, so I got 1,700 of you right now that want me to succeed. At least I hope. That's where we stand. So we're going to do paperwork. <coughs> And we're going to uh, read emails from the day, and then we're going to uh, work on the vlog all night. And the vlog will go up probably around 11 or 12 o'clock tonight. And then I'll go to sleep for about six hours. And that's the deal. All right, guys, so I will see you guys uh, tomorrow. Thanks for hanging out. I do appreciate it. Tomorrow we will be mowing yards. And uh, I think I'm alone tomorrow, too. So, But I hope you enjoyed the pressure washing information today and uh, just checking out some of the houses in the area that we do. And have a great day.